Just starting on ITV2 now, The Late Show with David Letterman. Here, the ITV1 News, followed by the national and local weather. Shoe bomb passenger appears before American court. British troops bring new security to Afghanistan. And last minute Christmas sales go through the roof. From ITN, the ITV News with Shuli Ghosh. Good evening. The airline passenger accused of trying to ignite explosives hidden in his shoes has appeared in court in America. Richard Reed, who holds a British passport, was remanded in custody on charges of assaulting flight staff. He faces 20 years in jail. Investigators say the terror attack was serious, though there's no evidence of a link to Osama bin Laden. Robert Moore reports. Escorted to and from a Boston court under heavy security, the man remains a mysterious figure, appearing to have multiple false names and no obvious link to a terrorist group. In court, charged under the name Richard Reed, he was ordered to be held in federal custody. He was holding a British passport, although the French authorities say he is originally from Sri Lanka. What is known is the extraordinary sequence of events that played out aboard American Airlines Flight 63 en route from Paris to Miami. Richard Reed tried to set light to a fuse protruding from his shoe. Later, the FBI said plastic explosives were concealed within the heel and sole of both shoes. He was subdued by stewardesses and passengers, and the flight was diverted to Boston, escorted by a pair of F-15 fighters. Prosecutors are struggling to unravel Reed's identity, motives, and possible terrorist links. The investigation is ongoing. Uh, the investigation here within the District of Massachusetts, as well as reaching out uh, to foreign intelligence uh, agencies, law enforcement agencies uh, in Europe as well. But at this point in time, the information we have is that the uh, defendant is Richard C. Reed traveling on a British passport. It has resulted in further increases in security at airports across America. Although another airline tragedy was narrowly averted, investigators are desperate to understand the full extent of the plot. It's still not known if Reed is part of a wider terrorist network and if there are other members of a cell waiting to strike U.S. targets. Robert Moore, ITN, Washington. British troops in Afghanistan are preparing to spend Christmas providing support and security for the country's fledgling government. Among their tasks today was building a temporary bridge over the main road into Kabul. The soldiers' presence has been welcomed by locals, but it's still not clear when the main body of peacekeepers will arrive. Tim Rogers reports. With so much of Afghanistan in ruins, the task of rebuilding is huge. But, Christmas or not, today the Royal Engineers got down to work. And this is where they're starting, the reconstruction of a road bridge that will provide an important link between Kabul and the Bagram military airfield. Yeah, I could spend the rest of my life here and not really make much of a difference, but it's, there's so much to, to do. But hopefully we're just going to kick-start the process off, get the whole thing moving, and from there uh, the, the, the government agencies, all the humanitarian aid relief can then kick in behind us and start to really make a difference to this country. It's a small beginning, but to these anti-Taliban fighters the significance is clear. They said they appreciated the fact that the British had come as friends. For centuries, armies have come to this country to conquer and destroy. But this time, it's a different story. The battle now is to win over the hearts and minds of the people by rebuilding bridges instead of blowing them up. Along the main runway at Kabul airport, there's also a big job to be done, repairing the damage left by the Americans. But British equipment and advisors are due to be brought in to speed up the process. Even though he witnessed the bombing, the chief air traffic controller says foreign support is now vital. We will appreciate, you see, the support of all uh, Americans and also British friends to support us. We need that. But while there's much to be done, there's still no exact date for the arrival of the bulk of the international peacekeeping force, because the details still need to be hammered out. Tim Rogers, ITN, Kabul. 
Stores across Britain have finally closed their doors tonight after a frantic last day of Christmas shopping. Many reported record sales as customers searched for those last-minute presents. There'll be big credit card bills to come, of course, but as Caroline Kerr reports, we could be spending our way out of recession. This evening, a nation of shoppers reluctantly headed for home. Despite warnings of economic gloom, Britain has been engaged in a retail frenzy for much of December and Christmas Eve turned out to be the most frantic shopping day of them all. In Manchester, the Trafford Centre was heaving before lunchtime. Worried-looking men predominated among shoppers searching out last-minute gifts. But there were no worries for retailers who are reaping the benefits of this shopping bonanza. We've had an absolutely incredible festive period. Last week, the week leading up to Christmas, we attracted 781,000 visitors to the centre, which is by far the busiest week we've ever had. In Edinburgh, it was the same story. Here, the department store Jenner's was packed from early morning. Across the UK, it's estimated that on average, we've spent £500 each in the run-up to Christmas this year. In London, the Oxford Street branch of John Lewis recorded its best week's trading since 1988. Luxury goods like jewellery have been among the high-value items which have been this year's best sellers. Overall, John Lewis says that its Christmas sales are up by 5% on last year. This department alone took more than a million pounds last week. It seems people are much more influenced by low interest rates and high employment levels than talk of global recession. And economists say that's the best thing that could happen, since buoyant consumer spending is Britain's most effective defence against recession. Tonight, the country's high street shops are finally closed. But for anyone suffering from symptoms of retail withdrawal, have no fear. Most shops open again on Boxing Day. Caroline Kerr, ITN. Huge crowds gathered in Bethlehem tonight to celebrate Midnight Mass, but the Palestinian president Yasser Arafat wasn't among them. He had to stay away for the first Christmas in seven years after Israel refused to lift a travel ban. That decision provoked protests from around the world, as Joe Andrews reports. Midnight Mass in Bethlehem tonight, but not much peace or goodwill on offer between the Israeli government and Yasser Arafat. The Palestinian leader has come to this service every year since the town became part of the Palestinian Authority. But tonight, there was just an empty seat, draped with his kafir. The Israelis refused to let him cross their blockade outside his compound at Ramallah because they said he'd failed to arrest the men who murdered the Israeli cabinet minister. Pleas from Europe, America and the Vatican failed to make them change their minds. So earlier, the Christian leaders of Bethlehem went to him. We want to present him our wishes for the feast of Christmas and to tell him that he will be present whether he will come or not. He will be more present even than ever. And in the end, Yasser Arafat decided not to defy the Israelis and try to come. Tonight, an Israeli settler on the West Bank has been badly hurt in an attack Palestinian terrorists claim is retaliation for the Israelis' action in Bethlehem. Joe Andrews, ITN. The cargo ship suspected of carrying terrorist material to Britain has been given the all-clear by police. They've spent three days searching the Nisha after it was seized in the English Channel. Scotland Yard says it's completely satisfied the ship doesn't pose a danger. Football, Nicholas Anelka says he's hoping for a permanent deal with Liverpool after officially starting his loan spell at the club. Anelka's already been named in the squad to face Aston Villa on Boxing Day. He says he's learned a lot since his controversial spell with Arsenal. Here's Neil Connery. Christmas Eve at Anfield and they're hoping the men in red have the gifts they're looking for. Nicholas Anelka was joined by fellow signing Milan Barros. The former Arsenal player rejected claims that he disliked the English game, admitting his problems at Highbury were of his own making. When I left Arsenal, I never said I don't like uh, England, so it was in my, in, in my head. But he had Arsenal win an FA Cup double before a turbulent departure from Highbury. Troubled spells followed at Real Madrid and Paris Saint-Germain. Few doubt his talent at club and international level, but his stormy past with former clubs is becoming a habit. When we had the opportunity to take Nicholas, who's obviously played in the Premiership, who knows what it's like to win a Premiership title, we thought it would give us that little bit extra. 
Anelka's on a loan deal, but Liverpool will pay 17 million if all goes to plan. Neil Connery, ITN. A reminder of tonight's main news. The airline passenger accused of trying to ignite explosives hidden in his shoes has appeared in court in America. Richard Reid, who holds a British passport, was remanded in custody on assault charges. And British troops in Afghanistan are preparing to spend Christmas providing support for the country's new government. Finally, it seems Santa Claus has been trying out a few different methods of transport to help him with tonight's big delivery. He was spotted parachute jumping in California. But by the time he got to Colorado, he'd switched to a snowboard. And not even the waters off Florida posed a problem as Santa set off to deliver gifts around the world. Well, he won't be far off now. That's it from us. Nicholas Owen will be here tomorrow with bulletins throughout the day. But from all the ITV news team, have a very Merry Christmas. So good evening. Well, Christmas Day in the south gets off to a cloudy note, mild with it, but some drizzle around. This moves off the scene, and for the most part, it's a dry, bright day with plenty of sunshine. Wind switching to northwesterly and some snow showers for Northern Ireland, the north of Scotland, parts of Wales, and one or two slipping into the Midlands as well as Norfolk. Bitterly cold temperatures. In fact, they actually tumble during the course of the day. So we go into our Boxing Day on a very cold note indeed, with a harsh, widespread frost. Some wintry flurries continue, mainly in the north and west. Road struggling temperatures though, four at best. That's all from me. On behalf of everyone at ITV1, have a really enjoyable Christmas. PowerGen. Bringing the essentials to life. Seasonal music from St. Thomas's Church in Fifth Avenue, New York, here in 15 minutes. First, to check on our Christmas Day weather. Granada Weather, sponsored by United Utilities. Well, Father Christmas probably won't need his cagoule. It's getting drier out there and frostier from the north. We're expecting clearer skies moving in towards the end of the night, and it's certainly going to get down to freezing in the north of the region, about 3 degrees Celsius in the south. Tomorrow, Christmas Day, it's going to dawn very bright in the north of the region and dry, a little cloudy in the south. And I think into the afternoon, we're expecting sleet and snow showers to move in, certainly south of Blackpool. It's a very windy day as well, and temperatures are really going to struggle, not getting any higher than about 3 or 4 degrees Celsius. Looking towards Boxing Day, it's going to be a very frosty start another cold day with wintry sleet and snow showers around temperatures very cold Granada weather sponsored by United Utilities